Hi, I'm Rod Sadaro, General Manager of Altitude Services, and I'm here with Laura Garvican lewis who has a PhD in sports science. Um, Laura's expertise tends to be in the area of altitude, and I'm just here to have a chat to her about altitude and exposure to elite athletes. Laura, um, if you'd like to just give us a little bit of a, a rundown on your experience with altitude, that'd be much appreciated. Thanks, Rod. Um, I began my PhD in 2007, uh, working primarily with the Australian Road Cycling Program, and we've been using altitude quite extensively um, since then. Um, we, we like to use it before, not only before competition, but we've also been um, experimenting with ways to really improve the um, training stimulus and how athletes can adapt over that time. So I think altitude's got uh, many strings to its bow, and if you use it correctly, you can it can be really quite powerful. I suppose since about the 1968 Olympics where um, they were conducted at Mexico City at altitude, athletes, sports scientists, coaches, etc., have been very, very interested in altitude exposure and training for sea level performances. In a nutshell, um, from your experience and the experience of others you've worked with, um, I guess the acid test is, do you believe altitude training works? Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly a big fan of altitude training and, and believe it can work if done correctly. Um, there's many different forms of altitude training, so you can actually train at altitude or the more powerful tool, I think, is you can sleep at altitude and then um, use that to improve your performance at sea level. Okay. Most of the people um, that I've dealt with um, in the human area and also in the equine area tend to be looking um, for changes in blood parameters or what we call hematological parameters. Um, in your experience, what sort of changes have you seen for the blood parameters and do they transfer into performance um, improvements across the board for athletes? Yeah, so um, when the human body or even the, the equine body is uh, exposed to altitude, the lower levels of oxygen in the air stimulate the body to produce more red blood cells so they can transport more oxygen when, when you're in that um, challenging environment. Then when you go back down to sea level, you've got this extra, these extra red blood cells which can transport more oxygen and that can um, translate into an improved performance at sea level. So we've been um, very interested in the magnitude of these changes and we've seen changes of up to sort of 8% in some athletes with sort of the average increase being about 1% per 100 hours. So that's 1% more haemoglobin in your body um, over that time and if you, you're spending sort of three to four weeks at altitude that can you know translate to about a three to four percent increase in in the amount of haemoglobin that you have. And that performance change that that also is reflected in performance changes that on the you know, on the athletic track for example? It definitely has the potential to uh, but as you know um, performance is, has so many factors that influence that so you know your motivation um, and your, the rest of your preparation your taper but certainly if you've got the ability to transport more oxygen you therefore have the potential to have a, a higher vo2 max or an improved economy or efficiency of, of exercise so there's no guarantees but i certainly wouldn't turn down the opportunity to have extra red blood cells Laura, I've heard you speak at a couple of conferences now and you talk about the the recipe for altitude training now a lot of the times I hear athletes talk about wanting to go and train at altitude and it's a, a really willy-nilly approach to it. Um, I think with any sort of training you need to be a lot more structured and I don't think altitude training is any different to that. Could you just give us a little bit sort of a, an insight into your recipe, if you like, about what you do with athletes in preparation for altitude training and their time at altitude? Yes, well, I really believe that altitude can work for everyone if you prepare properly so just like making a really good meal I think as long as you know you follow your recipe and you prepare properly you know everyone has the potential to be able to cook up something pretty good so that includes not just having making sure the ingredients are, are correct uh, but you know taking the time to make sure that you you properly prepare before you you head to altitude and then following you know the recommendations for essentially the cooking time so the duration the the actual altitude that you're at and, and what you're doing during your altitude tra training exposure. And then finally, you know, thinking about how you're going to serve up um, what you've cooked. So just like you wouldn't, you know, just suddenly shove something on a plate, 
you've got to really think about um, you know what's the what's the best way to use the altitude how do I structure it before um, my competition do I do I serve it immediately or do I you know let it stand for a while and, and then let those adaptations that you've um, potentially gained from altitude really come through so yeah, I, I like to use that approach because it, it, it breaks it down um, and ensures that the, altitude, the athletes that um, we're working with are really um, maximising their potential to adapt. And when, when you talk about ingredients, I suppose two of the, the principal ingredients with altitude training are the duration of time the athlete spends at altitude and the elevation they go to. Now, it's a, it's a difficult question because we can, we've got the different models of altitude training where athletes go and they, they go and train in the mountains for a period of time um, and or um, they actually are in a dormitory um, and able to sleep at altitude but training at sea level. In your opinion, what's the best option? Um, going to train at altitude in the mountains per se, um, or spending time in an altitude um, dormitory where they can sleep high, train low, and if you can just elaborate on the durations of times and the optimal altitude um, that you've witnessed, it's been given the best returns on for performance. So both methods of um, altitude training, so the um, classic method of living and training up a mountain and the live high, train low of sleeping in an, an altitude dorm and training in, at sea level, I think they've both got their their benefits. Um, there's you know often nothing better than escaping and getting up to the mountains and having you know that training camp and um, you know you get varied terrain and you can just live and breathe the sport that you're you're training at and I think that, that can you know really make a big difference but it's also logistically challenging and you've got to be away from your home your family your job so the altitude tents and and dormitories by they bring the mountains to you so you can um, you know, continue your your life and and still get the benefit of altitude. So we've we're definitely um, big fans of that model. Um, but you just got to make sure that you dedicate enough time to sleeping at altitude. So 14 hours a day uh, for about three weeks at an altitude of two and a half to three thousand meters. That's that seems to be the you know the benchmark to really get that. Um, uh, those hematological and non-hematological benefits. Also, be be aware that more is not always better. You know, you don't train hard all year round. You have have periods of intensity, um, and then you know you back off for a bit. And the same applies to your altitude training. So, three weeks on, then allow yourself time to really respond to those adaptations um, and have some good performances, and then revisit it later in the year. And you might find that. You know, you start to introduce three, maybe four blocks in a year, and um, you get these cumulative benefits. Um, and then, you, by the end of the year, you know you're reaching new performance goals that you didn't know that you were possible. Well, thanks very much for your time, Laura. Um, it's been really informative, and we've got no doubt a lot from that, um, as to will our viewers. Um, if you'd like any more information on altitude training, I invite you to visit our website at altitudeservices.com.au and send us through an email, and we'll send you for any information you might request.